Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how you can securely access your Synology NAS from outside of your local network. Now this is the fourth video in a series of videos that I'm doing on how you can secure your NAS. In the first video, we took a look at user and group permissions. In the second video, we took a look at some of the best DSM settings you can use. In the third video, we took a look at ransomware protection. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can securely access your NAS from anywhere in the world. Now the difference with this tutorial will be that I unfortunately can't go through every single step for these because they're kind of longer tutorials. However, I do have full tutorials for every single one of these and I'll have links for those in the description of the video and I'll try and put pop-ups as well as we're discussing them. But my goal is to just kind of talk through all of them and get you to actually understand what you're doing so that you can go and then implement any of those tutorials if you're interested in doing that. So there are a few different ways that you can access your NAS from outside of your local network. And my favorite way is by using a VPN server. Now the options that we're going to take a look at later are not necessarily better or worse. But what I want to point out is that this is probably the preferred approach that you'll see by the majority of people if you were to ask this question on a public forum. Uh, a VPN server, while it doesn't have to be set up on your NAS, can be set up on your NAS, and it creates a secure tunnel back to your local network, and you're then able to access the local devices on that network, including your NAS. Now, you can set up a VPN on something like a Raspberry Pi. You can set it up on your router. But for the majority of people, if you've never heard of a personal VPN, your best bet is probably going to be to use Synology's VPN server application. So when you launch the VPN server application, you'll have three options. And my favorite option is OpenVPN. And I have a full tutorial for this. I'll leave a pop-up for that now. But in summary, Synology will allow you to set up an OpenVPN server and what you do is after you enable it, you have to pick a dynamic IP range. And what this is, is this is the IP address that will be handed out to the devices that are utilizing this VPN server. So what I mean by that is if you connect to your phone and you're using the dynamic IP address of 10.5.0.1 here, the IP addresses that your clients will get are 10.5.0. whatever it is. So it could be 2, 3, 4, or 5, whatever DHCP will hand them out. So that's the dynamic IP address. It's not going to have a local IP address like you have on your local network. It will have whatever you specify here. Some of these other options you'll see are the maximum connections that you can have, the port number that you want to use, generally 1194 and UDP is fine the encryption and the authentication. This is all stuff, honestly, that can stay as default. The only thing I want to point out here is this allow clients to access server LAN. So what that means is that you're able to connect back to that uh, VPN server and you can access the devices on that server's LAN. So any of the devices on your local network. If you don't have this enabled, you won't be able to access those. Generally, from what I found, People want to access those devices, so you would go through and make sure that's checked off. Now, after you save this, you're going to have to export a configuration file, and this configuration file has to be modified. I have exactly what has to be modified in the tutorial, but after you modify it, you'll then have to put that on whatever device you want to connect back to your local network with. And with that, you'll have to also go into that privilege section and ensure that a user account on your NAS is able to use OpenVPN. Now, at that point, when you're connecting, you need the user account, the password, and you need that configuration file. So you have two forms of authentication that you need in order to access this uh, VPN server. So that's one of the main reasons why people suggest a VPN server. It's not as simple as just having a username and password. It is something that you have to actually have more than that. You have to have that configuration file. The configuration file has to have the correct information inside of it, etc. So this is overall the best, in my opinion, way that you can access your NAS from outside of your local network, but that doesn't mean it's the only way. Now, the second way that you can access your NAS from outside of your local network is by using a reverse proxy. And what a reverse proxy does is it takes a domain name and it will connect through a specified port that you're utilizing. Generally, it is 80 and 443 for HTTP and HTTPS. Um, but it takes that domain name and it will route that traffic back to whatever device you'd like to connect to. Now, you can use various different 
uh, reverse proxy servers, but Synology has a built-in one if you're interested in utilizing that. And to get to it, you can open the control panel, go to Login Portal, then you can go to Advanced, and then select Reverse Proxy. Now at that point, you're just going to have a blank list. But if you click Create, we're going to quickly talk through some of these options. So Reverse Proxy Name, this is just for you. You can keep this as whatever you want. Uh, generally, you'd want it to be the service. So for me, I'll type in DSM. Um, in the protocol, now this is the source. So what that means is this is what you're going to be connecting to from outside of your local network. So for this, you're going to want to use HTTPS. And at a later point, you can go in and create a, uh, a certificate for this to ensure that you have that as well. The host name, this is what you're going to use to connect back to this service. Now it can be a DDNS host name. It could be a subdomain with that DDNS host name. It can be your own domain that you own. It just has to be something that you own that points back to your local network. At that point, you'll come in here and put in the port. Now for the majority of people, I'd probably suggest that you use 443, but realistically you can use whatever you'd like. Um, and in this access control profile, you don't have to use this, but if you'd like to limit access here, you can. Um, it just will allow you to limit access to certain IP ranges or uh, certain IP addresses, whatever you'd prefer. Now that's the source section. In the destination section, this will be whatever you're trying to expose on your local network. So for us, it's gonna be DSM. So what I'll do here is in the protocol, I'll select HTTPS. In the host name, I'm gonna put the IP address of my Synology NAS and in the port section, I'm gonna put the HTTPS port inside of there. So this will have to be you know, based on whatever you have specified, but you can come in here and when you create it, what it's gonna do is now when you're outside of your local network, assuming that you port forwarded port 443, um, you'll be able to connect to that source host name that you specified and you'll be pointed back to DSM. Now in my full tutorial for this, I have how you can uh, utilize the certificate and everything. I'm not going to go through that here, but if you're using this for external traffic, you definitely want to get a valid SSL certificate. It's built into DSM, so you don't have to worry about that. You can do all of that through here, but that's how you can use the reverse proxy server. Now, if you're interested, you can take it one step further and you can utilize something like Cloudflare. And at that point, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a video on Cloudflare. You have to own your own domain for Cloudflare but it'll, allow, it'll basically give you a few more security options. So a lot of people will buy their own domain, connect it to Cloudflare, and then point Cloudflare back to their local reverse proxy server. And at that point, you have a little bit more security on the front end, and it will generally work as expected. Now, the third way you can access your Synology NAS is by simply port forwarding the DSM port. This isn't something I would generally recommend, and if you are gonna do this, I would definitely recommend two things. First is that you have to change from the default port. So in my second video in this series, I went over that, but you wanna make sure you go in and change from the default 5000 and 5001 to something different. Doesn't matter what it is, but just different from the default values. After you do that, the other thing I'd suggest that you take a look into is Synology's firewall. Now, while I'm saying this isn't necessarily something I'd suggest, I wanna be clear that that doesn't mean that it's bad by any means. If you do this right, meaning that you change the default port and you utilize Synology's firewall to limit access to a certain IP range or specific IP addresses, or even your country, um, though that would be a little bigger in scope than you'd probably like, you're at least limiting it in some capacity. You're not saying that the entire world can access this NAS on this port. So the goal here with this example is just to limit access as much as you possibly can. If you have a specific device that you know on a different network that should be accessing this and it has a static IP address for whatever reason, you can go in here, open this, and then you can allow that one IP address to access DSM. And then you'll know everybody else in the world will be blocked except for that one external IP address. So you have a few different ways that you can manage this but the majority of people would probably suggest that you don't do this. But like I said earlier, this really depends on your individual needs. So a blanket approach saying that you should always do this doesn't always apply. So that's why I wanna point out that while this might not be an ideal approach for most, there are certainly individuals out there that will utilize this and be totally fine doing it. 
Now, the final thing that we're going to take a look at is Synology's Quick Connect. And Synology's Quick Connect is great for people that just want to expose their NAS outside of their local network without having to think about anything. There's two things I want to point out here, though. The first is that you should definitely read Synology's white paper so you actually understand what Synology is doing in order to get this to work. I'll leave a link in the description to their white paper just in case you are interested in reading it, but I'd suggest that you do. The second thing that you have to understand is that you can't really control this. Synology is controlling this. So if you trust Synology and you say, hey, everything we went over in this video so far is just a little too complicated for me. I want to be able to access my NAS outside of my local network, but I don't really feel comfortable doing anything that we just did. And you're trusting Synology and you don't have any concerns. There's nothing wrong with Quick Connect. Quick Connect is totally fine for a lot of people. The big downside for more technical users is that they don't have control over it. So you can't go in and limit the firewall, for example, to only specific IP addresses. It's kind of all or nothing. Um, so at that point, that's not to say that it's bad. It's just to say that you lose control. And that control for a lot of people could be a good thing. So you have to keep that in mind and you can set it up relatively easily, but you have to first make that decision and say that, you know, I do want to use Quick Connect. So that's the only thing I wanted to point out with Quick Connect. I have a video on that. Um, I'll leave a pop up for it now if you're interested in learning how to utilize Synology's Quick Connect. But it's actually very, very easy to set up. It's probably the easiest out of everything we went through today. You don't need any major um, knowledge to do it. You just kind of pick a name and pick a few different options, and then it just kind of works. That's the beauty of Synology's Quick Connect. So those are four ways that we just went over that you can access your NAS outside of your local network. Unfortunately, like I said, this is not something that I could have full tutorials in this video because it would be way too long. But I do have full tutorials for them in the description of the video. There's not a single approach that is better than others. It really depends on exactly what you're trying to do. So keep that in mind, understand exactly how they work, and then make the decision based on whatever you think is best. I'm hoping that this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If the video did help you out, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.